Where's Happy Death Day 3? Where's the freaky sequel? Why can't we get a crossover where Tree Geldman and Millie body swap while stuck in a time loop battling a baby-faced killer? Why? 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 Did Christopher Landon make that atrocious film We Have a Ghost instead of literally any other idea of his? What is wrong with Hollywood? Life is tough, but we can at least content ourselves with totally killer, I guess. A forgettable horror comedy that delivers on its premise with enough gusto that you can walk away thinking to yourself, well, it wasn't a total waste of time. There was fun to be had. This weekend gave us three horror movie options to pick from. The Exorcist Believer, Pet Cemetery, Bloodlines, and Totally Killer. And the latter is the only one which I could say was entertaining. I have a scathing review of Exorcist Believer in the chamber, and I look forward to sharing it with all of you. I have no intention of wasting my time on the Pet Cemetery film. For now, though, Totally Killer is a movie full of cliches. You should be able to guess the killer from the outset, and there were moments where I was workshopping dialogue with my wife as the movie unspooled before us, because another draft or two would have made some punchlines a lot, how shall I put this, punchier? But Total Killer is still a solid time travel horror comedy with some god-awful commentary on the 80s, some pretty effective kill scenes, and a few jokes which genuinely made me laugh out loud. All of which makes for a messy experience that still stuck the landing. Kind of. It's nothing special, and the lead, Kernan Shipka, is a discount Jessica Roth. But it's still good stuff for a bit of fun, which ultimately is the goal of just about every horror film ever made. The story follows Jamie Hughes, the daughter of Pam Hughes, who 35 years ago was the only survivor of the Sweet 16 killer. This murderous fiend slaughtered all of Pam's besties by stabbing them 16 times apiece. Pam is traumatized and lives with the constant fear and expectation that at some point the killer will return, which means she can be a real drag when it comes to stuff like Jamie going out to party on Halloween. Unfortunately, she's also right and is attacked at the start of the film. The killer is back to finish the job and is quick to target Jamie as well. A fight ensues and through means which I really can't be bothered explaining, Jamie ends up back in time because of a time machine built by her best friend Amelia. Amelia is a black woman in STEM insert, so... Yeah, but if you put that aside for a moment, it gets the plot rolling and allows the hijinks to start up. Jamie is now in the 80s, just before the start of the Sweet 16 murders, and so she determines to stop them. But it turns out kids just want to do drugs, have sex, and aren't too fussed about a crazy blonde woman who shows up out of nowhere declaring that a murder will happen in a safe town like Vernon. Will Jamie succeed in stopping the killer? Well... Obviously, the whole film is predictable, but from what I've seen, it helps to end a plot synopsis with a question, even an obvious one. Anyway, Totally Killer is standard horror comedy stuff, and given the success of Happy Death Day, it's a film which isn't afraid to gleefully say, we, we figured out time travel, shut up about the science, go along with it, you obnoxious jerk. What do you want? Another Shining? Screw you. This subgenre isn't about high art. Cunt. And this is the first real strength of Totally Killer. It knows what it is and what it's supposed to deliver, and broadly, it achieves this by making a few well-timed jokes and having a cast that are willing to embarrass themselves in the pursuit of a good laugh. There are very few odious winks at the camera to let you know that no one really cares about what they're doing here. Instead, you have commitment to the bit, and that is plenty endearing. The second strength is the supporting cast. Literally everyone else is more engaging than Kin and Shipka, with the core of 80s cliché teens proving to be the real highlight. In particular, Marissa, played by Steffi Chin Salvo, has some of the funnier lines in the whole film in a gory murder scene that doesn't really count as a spoiler because, come on, the trailer told you this would happen. No way. No way. Finally, on the compliment side, the film as I've already touched on, knows who it is. They aren't trying to save the world or reinvent the wheel or feel the need to solve every social ill, though there are a few ham-fisted comments, and this ensures you can at least say it's anodyne fun. The only truly obnoxious thing about the movie is its reluctance to take risks. 
And this is, of course, its first flaw. The very design of Total Killer is a complete lack of ambition. This is a safe film made to be light entertainment that you watch in the lead up to Halloween. That's all well and good. It's nothing wrong with it. But it would have been nice if the writers had worked a little harder to create something novel. The only interesting scenario involves jumping back to the present timeline to show how Jamie's decisions change reality and how characters respond to it via the Mandela effect. This was a nice touch which gave the film something unique as we could cut back and forth to see changes in real time. The issue is this amounts to two minutes worth of novelty in a hundred minute film. Another weak point was the writers took far too long to get us in the game. We have a drawn out sequence at the start of the film prior to the murders and then a further delay before we travel back in time. This results in an opening 20 minutes which should have been condensed. I know it may seem pedantic to focus on this, but when someone says a movie felt right, or anything along the lines of intuition, they're often referring to the pacing in and between scenes, which they understand from having watched so many movies to be a real thing, but just haven't necessarily been given language to describe it. Right. Another weakness is that the film is chock full of characters who don't die nearly fast enough given how superficial they are. A dumb jock is fun for five minutes, but he's far less interesting after the same joke is repeated for an hour. We know three teens are going to die from the outset, and running through a sequence that has minor variations to this, but nothing surprising, such as a completely new person dying from the core cast, is disappointing, because ultimately you as an audience member are simply going through the motions. Alongside this, there is very little by way of clever commentary on the 80s. We have a protracted dodgeball sequence which will make you roll your eyes so hard you may end up blind. There's smoking in front of children and confusion about older technology, but the jokes just don't land when they're trying to make fun of the era. So you'll probably find yourself entertained by Totally Killer, but won't view it so positively that you get a franchise out of this thing. When all is said and done, it is the kind of fun, disposable horror comedy that you watch when you want to unwind and can't find anything better on. You could take it or leave it, and in either case you won't be the worse for wear. But if you do give it a go, then I think you'll find you get some satisfaction. Thanks for watching. Get away from me!